Frequency response is one of the most important specifications to describe a studio monitor on paper. It consists of upper and lower cutoff frequencies, both measured in hertz, plus a defined drop-off point in decibels. Adam Audio is known for its art tweeters, which take care of the high frequencies and are often praised for their precision and clarity. However, in this video, we would like to focus on the bottom end of the frequency spectrum, in particular, that of smaller studio monitors, where low-end reproduction is significantly impacted by cabinet and woofer size. Small monitors have a reputation for being not the real deal when it comes to bass. But is this still true? Well, technology has come a long way, and maybe it's time to rethink what small studio monitors are actually capable of in 2025. There have been great advances in designing compact loudspeakers with surprisingly good bass response. From optimized bass ports, passive radiators, highly efficient Class D amplifiers, and long throw woofers, Many of these innovations can be found in Adam Audio Studio Monitors. To demonstrate what a modern small studio monitor is capable of, we're comparing the low-end reproduction of an old and a new studio monitor, both with four and a half inch woofers. In this corner, a real legend and beloved by many, the A3X from the now discontinued AX series. And it's Challenger, the new kid on the block, the successor in a modern design and engineered for a tight and extended bass response, the A4V from the new A-Series. At this point, we recommend putting on good headphones as the speakers in your mobile phone, laptop, or maybe even your studio monitors will not be able to audibly recreate the following audio examples. One by one, we will play increasingly low sine waves with a constant input level through each monitor and measure the output level using an SPL meter at circa 50 centimeters. We initially set the volume of both monitors to 85 decibels using white noise. When matching the volumes, the SPL meter was A weighted, which means that the low frequencies were filtered and not considered in the volume setting. Here, we are mainly looking at the relative differences in volume at certain frequencies between the two speakers, as there are also room effects to factor in. At 70 Hz, both loudspeakers are almost equal in SPL. At 60 Hz, we can register a slight increase in volume for the A4V. This is caused by the room and affects both speakers equally. However, despite the room mode, we can see that the A3X is at 86 decibels and already loses volume at the low end. At 50 Hz, we can see a significant difference in the volume. The room mode is no longer noticeable and we can clearly see that the A3X starts rolling off. To put this into perspective, a difference of 6 dB corresponds to a doubling of the sound pressure levels and the A4V is already 8 decibels louder at 50 Hz. At 40 Hz, you can now also see a drop in the volume of the A4V, however, it is still almost 8 decibels louder than the A3X with the same woofer size. This is a very impressive value for a 4.5 inch woofer, and every time people hear the A4V, they're surprised about the low end performance and overall headroom of the monitor. Of course, you cannot trick physics, and if you want to hear deep bass frequencies, you can't beat the sheer size of an 8 inch woofer in a big cabinet. For reference, we also did the same experiment with the T8V, which still managed to reproduce 89.6 decibels at 40 Hz in our room. However, it may make you reconsider what you thought about a studio monitor with a 4.5 inch woofer. The benefits of more flexible placement with smaller studio monitors are certainly there, and if you still find that you need to monitor at low, low frequencies, the addition of a subwoofer is also an option. Please let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you soon.